Okay, well, welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue the planet's uh, review today. And uh, we're left with uh, asteroids. And then we're going to do comets. And then after that, we're done. We'll go to, uh, we'll start a new section on the sun. I want to backtrack just for a second. Uh, the other day, we were talking about meteors. Uh, remember, we mentioned that uh, there were iron meteorites and there were stony meteorites. The, the pattern that helps you to pick out that differentiates the iron meteorites is a pattern known as uh, Wittmannstätten patterns. And uh, the pattern that helps to um, pick out the stony meteorites is the chondrules. I wanted to show a picture with that so you can visually see that. <clears throat> and that one was this one here. Very interesting, the very different features. This one is a stony meteorite. You can tell the chondrules here. They're round uh, shaped uh, objects in embedded inside of the stony meteorite. This one is the iron meteorite. You can really tell this apart. It's a crystal structure that forms this way and then sometimes this way crisscross. If you see something like this, if you're ever hiking, you'll become a famous person. You will find an iron meteorite. These ones are very rare, very, very rare. But when you do find them, these are known to be from outer space, OK? So now we can go to the asteroids section. We talked about meteor showers. OK, asteroids. Uh, asteroids are con concentrated in a few different spots in our solar system, okay? The first one is the asteroid belt between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. So pretty much most of you have heard of this and know of this. It's between the orbit of uh, Mars and Jupiter, average distance of 2.8 AUs from the sun. The second one is the group of asteroids which are in front and back of Jupiter, okay? They are basically going around the sun, and their, their uh, orbit resembles that of Jupiter. Uh, they are 60 degrees in front of Jupiter and 60 degrees behind. So if this was the sun, and if this was Jupiter, they are basically, imagine the orbit of Jupiter like this. You could uh, go like this. There are some asteroids here. Then you go like that. Some of them are here. And this angle is 60 degrees. So these points are known, what are known as Lagrangian points, because they are certain points where the gravity of the Sun and Jupiter have locked them into orbit. They can't move out of there. If they ever try to move out of there, the Sun is going to drag them back, Jupiter is going to drag them back. And so they're kind of following the Sun together with Jupiter. Okay? And then the other asteroid belt would be here. I'm just going to roughly do it like this. They're going around the sun. So that's the, the main asteroid belt. Okay, They're, Those also go around the sun. The third category of asteroids are called near-Earth asteroids. Okay, The orbit of near-Earth asteroids would be more like they're going like this, you know, all kinds of crazy orbits. And so the, the asteroid belt asteroids are just going around the sun, but the near-Earth asteroids, they're going like this. Um, these are divided into two separate categories. One is called Apollo and Amor. The Amor objects cross the orbit of Mars, but not of Earth. The way to remember this and the way I remember it is think of the word Amor means love. So the Amor asteroids love us too much ever to cause us harm, okay? Uh, so they are not the ones that hit the Earth. They cross the orbit of Mars, okay? They come within the orbit of Mars, but they never come within the orbit of uh, Earth. So if this is the orbit of Earth, let's say, an Amor asteroid, let's say this is Mars, an Amor asteroid might start here, cross the orbit of Mars, then go back. You see? So this would be the Amor asteroid. Is this ever going to uh, hit the Earth? 
is there a possibility it's going to hit the earth? No, not really, right? It's going to come like this, then go like that, and then back. The earth is doing this. The earth is going around the sun. The sun is here. So Amor Asteroids loves us too much, okay? The other one, the Apollo asteroid, might do something like this. Let's say it's starting here, Apollo. It's going to go, come within the orbit of the earth, and then go back out. You see that? If it ever, if the earth was ever there, and the asteroid is coming, it might hit us, okay? So Apollo is the one, the Apollo asteroid crosses the Earth's orbit and may be the cause of periodic collisions with the Earth. Uh, it says roughly on the average, Earth is hit by an Apollo object once every 250,000 years or so. I mean, it's not that often, but it's still often enough to cause us damage. The reason they don't hit us even more often is because the orbit of the asteroids, like if this is the orbit of the Earth, the orbit of the asteroids is not in the same plane as the Earth's. So even if it does cross the Earth's orbit, it's going to come in like this, and it's very unlikely that they're ever going to hit each other. If the orbit of the asteroids was in the same plane as the Earth, they might hit, this, hit each other even more than this. Okay? They, they, they would have hit each other, they would have hit us even a lot more. But since their orbits are, are inclined, 60 degrees, 50 degrees, 30 degrees. So it's never going to come and hit. Very, very rare that it's ever going to come and hit. Sometimes when the astronomers say, oh, the asteroid is approaching us, but when they say it's approaching, it's still 300,000 miles away. So that, that is a very close approach for them, you know. <clears throat> okay, so this one shows you another picture of that. You see here, we got the Trojan asteroids. Where is Jupiter? You see Jupiter? Uh, so if I draw a line from Jupiter to the sun like that, this is 60 degrees. And then these are the Trojan asteroids behind Jupiter. See, they're going around the sun. And then this is the main asteroid belt, okay? And then you've got, the, oh, this is the orbit of Mars, the red one, you see here? And then this is the orbit of Jupiter. And then the, uh, the, the blue one, or the purple one, this one is um, orbit of Earth. So whichever dot you're seeing, you see here this one? That must be what? Um, Amor. Amor asteroid. This one, you see here? It's crossed the orbit of uh, Mars, but it's not going to cross the orbit of Earth. These ones here, you see these dots? One, two, three, four, these ones? Those must be uh, Apollo asteroid because they're coming inside the orbit of the Earth. You see? So there's lots and lots of these. But again, as I said, their orbit of, uh, their plane of orbit is different than the orbit of the Earth. So it's very rare that they're actually going to hit you. There is believed to be about 2,000 of these Apollo asteroids, okay? Apollo is the ones that are dangerous to us, you see. But only 200 have been found. The largest asteroid is called Ceres. That's the largest asteroid of any of them, okay? Uh, which is about 30% of the moon's size. So that's still pretty big, even though it's small. And it belongs to the asteroid belt group. It was the first discovered asteroid ever, okay? Um, it was discovered, it's interesting because it's the beginning of the 19th century, right on the first day of the century. It's a good way to start the century, I guess. January 1, 1801, first day, by the Sicilian monk Giuseppe Piazzi. It was named Ceres after the Roman goddess of the harvest, okay, from which we get our word cereal. Cereal, Ceres, harvest, right, because cereal comes from wheat and stuff, so that's kind of related, the terms. The asteroid belt has gaps in it called the Kirkwood gaps. So uh, the asteroid belt is not completely solid filled with asteroids. There are certain gaps in there. Uh, where have we seen this before? Where we've seen some uh, par uh, objects like rocky objects and then we notice that there's gaps in there. We saw it the other day in the rings of, it starts with S, 
Saturn, right? Uh, they probably all have this feature, but Saturn's rings have a big gap in it called the Cassini division, okay? This seems to be a general phenomenon. And so the asteroid belt also has these gaps. And then those gaps are called Kirkwood gaps. Those Kirkwood gaps are more or less free of asteroids. Uh, for example, if the distance of an asteroid was 3.28 AUs, it would revolve twice around the sun in the same time it takes Jupiter to revolve once. This would make Jupiter tug at the asteroid in the same direction, and this would perturb the asteroid's orbit outwards or inwards, okay? So the reason that these gaps are created is due to resonance pattern with the orbit of Jupiter, okay? If they happen to be at a certain distance from the sun, and then every time Jupiter is tugging at it in the same direction, it's either going to pull it inward or outward, and that's going to create the gap, you see? So these resonance patterns also exist in the rings of Saturn, which makes its uh, gaps, okay? Uh, this one shows you here number of Jupiter revolutions around the sun, number of asteroid revolutions around the sun. And then this creates the um, Kirkwood gaps. It's a one to four ratio, one to three ratio, you see here. So distance from the sun, you see, if it's a one to four ratio, there's a gap there. That's the first Kirkwood gap. If it's a one to three ratio, it creates another gap. Sirius exists right there. So Sirius is a little bit outside of the Kirkwood gap. You see here, this is a Kirkwood gap right here. There's almost no asteroids there. Sirius is a little bit closer to the sun than that Kirkwood gap. And then another Kirkwood gap is this one, one to two ratio. This is the one that the example was giving you. Uh, it's 3.28 AU, and that also creates a Kirkwood gap. And then you, go, you get a uh, gap, 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 and then you get the Trojan asteroids that are in resonance with, Jupiter, with Jupiter's orbit, you see. <clears throat> asteroids tend to be dark and have a low density around 1.5 grams per cubic centimeter. So their density is even less dense than the moon. The moon's density was 3.3 grams per cubic centimeter, so they're even less dense. Interestingly, some asteroids like Ida, 52 kilometers long, have their own moons named Dactyl. Uh, I really like this one. It's a cool picture. Uh, they usually show Ida. And the next to it is this little moon going around the asteroid called Dactyl, uh, which revolves around them. Dactyl is so small. It's only 1.5 kilometers uh, wide. Asteroids fall into three major categories. S-type asteroids are stony. In comparison with the other ones, they're brighter, okay? So stony, bright, reddish asteroids made up of silicates mixed with metals, and they resemble the chondrite meteorites, okay? So remember the uh, stony meteorites we talked about that have chondrules in them? Uh, these ones resemble those. They are common in the inner asteroid belt, okay? So if you take the asteroid belt, they're going to be divided into three subsections, inner, middle, outer. The stony meteorites are in the inner uh, asteroid belt. C-type asteroids are carbonaceous. That means they have carbon, okay? Uh, dark asteroids, so they're made up of dark. Think about your pencil. Your pencil is a dark pencil. It's made up of carbon. That's the carbonaceous uh, asteroids. Um, made up of carbon and resembling the carbonaceous chondrites, uh, those are other, another kind of meteorites. They are common in the outer asteroid belt. So you got S is in the inner, you got C, the carbonaceous in the outer, and then you got um, M type asteroids are metallic bright asteroids made up of iron nickel alloys and resembling the iron meteorites, okay? So the ones that I showed you the picture of, the iron meteorites with this uh, crystallized pattern. So those are metallic asteroids. They are common in the middle asteroid belt. The way that I remember this is to remember Santa Monica College, okay? Santa Monica College. 
S comes first, M comes next, then college comes last. So inner, Santa Monica, stony, okay? Middle, M, metal, metallic, and C, carbonaceous, you see? If you think of ways like that to remember things, it helps you, you know? Um, this is the one that I was saying, Ida, is the asteroid, okay? It itself isn't that big, 15 kilometers or something, but the dactyl is this one. It has its own moon. The moon is going around the asteroid, just like a regular moon goes around the planet, so amazing. Um, the origin of asteroids has been a puzzle for many years. The old theory stated that they are the remnant of a planet that used to exist there, but shattered, okay? However, it would take enormous forces to s shatter such a terrestrial planet. So that theory has been abandoned. Instead, most astronomers now believe that asteroids are the remnants of a material that never formed, okay? They never formed there, it never formed as a planet. It just stayed as small rocky objects as a planet due to the enormous tidal forces caused by the pull of the sun and of Jupiter, on the other hand. So the sun's pull on one hand, Jupiter's pull on the other, never allowed the planet to form there. That's the theory. So there, there never was a planet there. Jupiter was the, the culprit. It didn't allow gravitational forces to cause a planet to exist. Gra Earth's, Jupiter's gravity kept tugging at it. Okay, now we get to the, our last topic in this solar system uh, section called comets.